day nine of self-isolation for me here in London. Much like yourselves, I've been using this time really constructively, trying to better myself as an individual. Maybe not. On this episode today, I'm in conversation with the Nigerian-based artist Arinze from his house in Lagos. I wanted to use this opportunity to find out how the region is preparing for the impending wave of coronavirus. But before we get into that, here's a brief background of Arinze and his work. Arinze Stanley Abengo is a hyper-realistic artist from Lagos, Nigeria. He was exposed to the world of paper from a very young age through his family's paper business. No, not that one. With that in mind, it may come as no great shock to find out his chosen medium is paper and pencil. In the last few years, he's gained worldwide attention with his hyper-realistic drawings that could easily be mistaken for photographs. He's exhibited with prestigious galleries all over the world, but was kind enough to sit down and have a chat with me just after panic buying some tissues at the local market. You told me earlier that you had to hold back an hour because you were at panic buying. Yeah, I just came back from the market like um, um, about 30 minutes ago. So I had to take down all the groceries. It's been hectic. What were you panic buying? Like literally everything and a lot of tissue paper. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> You're in Lagos just now? Yeah, I'm in Lagos. What was that experience like going down to the market? Was it was it different? Uh, I haven't been out since the whole coronavirus thing um, became very huge. And I went out to the market today, to the supermarket, and it was a whole different Nigeria. The whole I didn't expect Nigerians to already start practicing social distancing. I got to the supermarket and there was this long queue before you could get the to the supermarket. And then on the floor, you see it was measured um, with tape uh, with about three feet from each other. So you stand on the tape three feet apart from the next person. And, and I was like, wow, this is not really happening right now. It took me about 20 minutes before I could get into the supermarket. And, and I was like, wow, that is crazy. <laughs> so that was the moment that you realized that this is, yeah, this is that serious. Was, that was the moment I realized that, wow, this whole this is a whole different thing. And this thing is serious. I probably should just get everything I need right now, even if I have to stay in the queue. Um, right now, we're not recording a lot of deaths, but I feel like Nigerians are really, really... Uh, Nigerians are more conscious than you expect them to be about this coronavirus because cause there are a lot of news going around, both the fake and the... And so everyone is on lockdown right now. I literally, I don't know how to, to put the whole situation, but I feel like we could do this. I feel like Nigerians, we could, we could do this with what I saw today. This is quite interesting because you feel quite... Uh, yeah. Is there a sense of pride? You know, when I got out of my house today, I, I expected not to see any um, change. I did. It. I thought that I was going to see, you know, people clustered as usual, but everyone was giving their distance. It was, it was incredible. Has the government imposed any big changes from the top? Have they imposed a lockdown? Are you allowed to go out and still go to the coffee shop or the bar or something like this? Or is this all closed? The Lagos state government uh, is planning to close down all markets as from tomorrow. But as of today, everything is still open. So I think the major, the major lockdown is going to start from tomorrow. Have you guys been looking towards the rest of the world have you been seeing how it's panned out here in europe and is that informing any of these decisions or is it very much contained within africa personally looking at the results i've been seeing from um foreign countries like europe i, I asked myself are you sure that we are actually taking accurate records over here it's going to be quite difficult to, for us to get the accurate number of people with this virus in Nigeria because it's more like a Nigerian thing when you have when you're sick and then you know that that sickness is a popular sickness and then and then people are kind of shy to come outside to go to the hospitals for tests and we just need to keep studying the the whole virus and the trends here in Nigeria but we we are like literally looking at like it like something that is coming so we're trying our best to prepare. What's Nigerian health system like? Because I don't know a huge amount. Do you have free health care? Is it insurance only? How are you supported? 
Nigeria healthcare is not prepared for this virus, to be very honest. We're having a population of almost 200 million people. And then you have, like, I don't know, what's the statistics? The So how many people to one doctor? And it's really poor. If you go around Lagos, you see few hospitals that actually match the standards. Talk more of being able to contain this virus when it becomes fully blown here in Nigeria, if it becomes fully blown. But for now, I can, I can speak to you that we have very limited hospitals that could actually contain this virus. And if it should go down here in Nigeria, it's going to hit us hard. And um, that's basically it. If, it. if it comes to worse, I think Nigeria is one of the countries that is going to suffer from the coronavirus the most. Well, we have good news. We just received supplies from Jack Ma. So hopefully that should help because there's a great scarcity in face masks and hand sanitizers over here. I just got one hand sanitizer for about 5,000 naira. The prices of things right now are actually stable. Like, mm -hmm. you know, provisions and all that are actually stable. But the prices of hand sanitizers went up like almost 200%. Jesus. And... And uh, you think the hand sanitizers are, are expensive until you until you try to buy uh, face masks. Those ones went up like, I don't know, like it went up almost 400%. I tried to get face masks on the market. I couldn't even find it. The thing that we have in the UK is toilet roll is now everybody's like panic buying toilet roll. Oh, no. Oh no, nobody nobody's buying toilet roll here. Oh, is this oh is this a Nigerian uh, Nigerian thing? Different system. <laughs> Different system. Well, no, no I don't, I I actually asked myself why why is there a panic buy for toilet roll in the US? I don't actually get it. I don't I don't get I don't I don't understand. I'm trying to understand like okay, toilet roll, why? You guys are supposed you guys are supposed to have like panic for like sanitizers and all that, but Food. then toilet roll <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can't even I can't even relate. I'm still very curious to know though why the tissue paper is being um, you know, rushing in Europe and America. Because I think people feel that when if they can't have a mountain worth, then they will have dirty assholes for forever. I think that's what they think. <laughs> 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 that's crazy as if as if there was no other system to work around that yeah, right <laughs> so the moods there today people taking it quite seriously people realize that this is um this isn't it's not a hoax you know i think for a lot of people at the start what was happening yeah. it was like oh this is just another media story you know it's story, yeah. it's trying to distract us or something for us in the uk it was like okay every single day that went by it was like taken more and more seriously and if you guys are sort of maybe italy and china are quite far ahead we're behind and then maybe you guys are now just waiting to see where it comes yeah. are you are, do you think people are taking this seriously at the moment i feel like nigerians are taking it seriously but our government isn't isn't taking it as serious as you would think they should because first of all i feel like the most important thing is they need to get the actual statistics on ground I don't think they have accurate statistics because for a country of 200 million people and you're just recording less than less than 40 cases, that means there's a problem in the statistics. We had um, the former vice president's son just contacted coronavirus. And um, it makes people wonder if these people on the top positions can have coronavirus, what about us? Right. Yeah. So I feel like people, Nigerians... There's there's one thing there's one saying about Nigerians is Nigerians know they carry last. That is we don't ever we don't ever lack behind. When Nigerians do something, they like to do it to the extreme. So what I saw today was the real definition of Nigerians know they carry last. And and um I feel like Nigerians, we personally were prepared mentally, but but financially, a lot of people are not prepared for this. It's going to hit the country hard, really, really hard. How are you preparing for this just now? What's your game plan? Well, personally, as an artist, my my life is like a quarantine, so I'm used to this. So I'm going to be indoors most of the day. I just I just stocked up my 
my supplies and hopefully if I see if I can get some more, I, I could go out there, you know, give a, a lot of people that I know that I won't be able to afford it. You know, try to use my social media platforms to spread the news, to spread information about coronavirus. And basically the best I can do. Artists naturally have this lifestyle already. Most of them spend yeah. days after days in, in, in their studio in isolation alone. So this is like not yeah. that different yet. What's your advice? to people that are new to this or now in their second week? It is very easy for someone that is in isolation to lose it. Except you probably keep yourself busy. Maybe you learn a skill. I mean, there are so many classes you can learn online. Um, do something, try to be productive. Learning something new is, uh, try to learn something new every day. It's, it's basically how you could get through this. Look, man, I really appreciate that. Uh, stay safe and, you know, look after yourself. And I, I hope to I hope to take this talk a little bit further soon. Thank you, Arunzi. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care. God bless. If there's one thing that we can take away from that interview, it's that no matter what lies in store for the future, no matter how dark it might seem, it must be met with a collective spirit of optimism, a rational head and a good bit of humour. Let me know where in the world you're locked in from in the comments. I'll be with you guys real soon. Till then, take care, look after each other. My name's Doug. This was Fifth Wall TV. To avoid any embarrassment, tell me exactly how I pronounce your name. Okay, my name is Arinze. Uh, Arinze. Arinze Stanley... Eggbun yeah. Goa? Goa? <laughs> egg, egg. Yeah, you could just you could just call me Arinze Stanley. I, I I like to think um more of my name as Arinze Stanley. Okay. But the, if you want to son pronounce my son name is pronounced as Egbengu. 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 You don't need to pronounce the G. Okay. It's e like Ebengo. Egbengu, yeah. Ebengo. Yes, correct. Arinze Stanley Ebengo. <laughs> Yeah. What about yours? I've been trying to pronounce yours also. Go on. I don't know. I didn't. I don't know if I could pronounce it as dog. <laughs> dog. Dog Gillen. Yeah. Oh my. My guy. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice.